going to try glue line painting and we're going to use glue line outlines and then a watercolor wash inside the lines. So we're going to start with a drawing on our watercolor paper and we don't want the drawing to be too intricate because we're going to be going over that drawing with Elmer's glue and it needs to have some space in between the glue lines. We're going to draw some flowers and you're going to recognize them from the Valentine's card coloring page that I made. I'm not going to draw the heart probably, just the flowers. We're going to start with a couple daisy looking flowers. Now you will be able to see this line through your glue. So you can use pencil, you could use colored pencil if you want. And we'll make a leaf or two. I'm trying to make them nice and open. And I'm going to make one flower that's kind of a rose look. So I start with a little, like a little kidney bean looking area. And then I'm going to kind of go with a little shape around it and start on top of that shape and then make another one. And I'm going to keep making these around that center area and I'll make it kind of a rose look. I'm going to get kind of bigger as I keep going out. I think that's good. Out the side I'm going to make kind of a fern like leaf. Just a fun shape. It's not really hooked to anything in particular here. Kind of a fun shape. And a tulip up here. I love tulips. I'm making a little U shape. I'll put a line down the center of those and maybe another curly cue up here just for fun. Maybe a circle here and there. Maybe we'll do kind of a lily look, looking flower. I'm going to draw kind of a little bean looking center and then a little petal that comes up, one to the side, one to the other side. Make that stem go down and one that goes down and then one that kind of tips down from each side with some little lines down the center of the petals and a stem and we'll draw another curly cue over here to fill up that space and then a couple more circles and dots for fun and I think that's good. I lost a little film footage on the beginning of my glue pattern here, but you can see the drawing that we made earlier and I'm starting to put the glue on top. So I've opened my glue up uh, almost all the way and you can control the flow by how much you open the little valve on top, the little twist piece. And you might want to try that on another piece of paper before you start here and you want to have a gentle but firm flow and as consistent as possible. But I'm moving from the top part of my page this direction because I'm right-handed and I don't want to start down here and then drag my hand through the glue. I almost got a little bit too small in my drawing right here on this rose. The lines are almost a little bit too close together. So you can learn from what I do to leave your lines, make it a little further apart. You see it's getting to be pretty small spaces in between the glue because that's where we're going to put our paint after a while on our next step. I'm so excited about that. Sometimes it kind of puddles a little bit like right there and I can't help that and I'm not going to worry about it either. When I stop my glue, I kind of touch the paper and move straight upwards best that I can so that I don't leave glue where I don't want it. And there we have it. We're going to let it sit probably overnight. I'm going to give it a good 8 to 10 hours to dry because this is going to take a long time to dry. It took a full, what, 10 hours for it to dry, especially in the little spots that were heavier. So if you're making this on some sort of a short time frame, it won't work because your glue will still be wet. 
So you'd have to maybe do the glue part in one session and the painting in a second session. So I'm pretty excited to try the watercolor wash and it's going to go in the blank areas in between the paint. So I've got my water here and my watercolors and I'm just using regular praying watercolors. So I'm going to do a little bit on the background with some blue and you can do some paint mixing in the tray of your little watercolor dish because we're going to add some water and kind of go in between these areas and then we can also dip in some other colors after we've gotten started with one color we can add a little bit of another color to it as well and we can mix and I'm trying to go in between these areas not so much over the areas let's add a little bit of purple in with that just let it kind of run into those areas going back and forth I like this blue color really well. I'm trying to think what I'm going to use in my different uh, flower patterns here. Maybe inside the swirls I'll use a different color. I'm going to try looking in between here on these petals of my daisy-like flowers. I'm going to add some water. I'm trying to not paint on top of the glue areas to leave those to be kind of um, the separator points in between my color. So I thought I would use a yellow in there. Yeah, I'll use yellows in these daisies. They could be a white if you wanted. Any color, actually. Maybe a little bit of a, another color to kind of make it pop a little bit. Maybe a little bit of an orange. I always like a little orange next to blue. For some reason, that really looks pretty to my eye. I like that. I'm going to start with a lighter green in my leaf area. Leaf area. Load my brush up with some color. Some water. Oh, that's very, very light. I'm yeah. not putting it all very much the way pigment in it. over the that's a good starting the glue. Spot. You can kind of see that and glue kind of darker green area right with there. The water kind of run white. the color. That's the beautiful thing about watercolor is how the colors kind of run together. I thought I would add just like a little bit of a, a light brown into the center of that flower. A little bit of a sunflower look to the flower. Grabbed a paper towel to use to blot off some of the water on my brush if it gets too wet. Let's try putting something in this swirl area. Okay, how about... Um, I could use this orange color and kind of let it the color swirl in the water a little bit. Maybe add just a little bit of red to it. I'm just dabbing the, the, the red into that orange and letting it run and puddle up a little bit, just seeing what it will do. Let's put a little bit of green here on this center leaf. Starting with that real light green, kind of wet brush, putting it in between the glue areas. I have to say that the glue is doesn't stand up the way that I thought it would. I thought it would be kind of a tall mound. It's kind of flat and that surprises me a little bit. Now I've gone back and put some dark green in my brush and I'm just dotting it onto the leaves just to run in there and give it some depth. And Now I'm going to do this pink, this rose, and I'm going to do mine in colors of pink. I'm going to Put kind of a main color on these different petals. I'm getting them all wet so they have some water there where I can where I can dip the brush on my color into that water. You see I'm, and I'm putting the water in between where that glue was. So I'm going to start with this pink color, load my brush up. I'm just going to let it run where it wants to run in that wet water that I put on the blank paper. And then I might add some a little bit of red here and there. I might um also use some purple in there to kind of get the darker and the lighter look on the petals. Okay, so I'm going to add some more color and dot it in, give some darker pink, and now we're and then we're going to go back and add some different color than the pink. So let's see here. So I might come and pick up a little bit of this purple color and just dot it in among the leaves, especially around the outside edge. 
of the leaf, of the petals is what I mean to say. See how that kind of just runs into the pink and kind of does, it's kind of like magic, I think, the way it kind of runs. But I can't, I can't control what it does. It kind of does what it wants to do. Dotting in the pink as well so we can run back into the purple. This is such a fun way of experimenting with watercolors to see what it does because it has kind of a, a way that it acts. It runs into the water and it stays put on the dry paper. Kind of spreading the water up closer to the, the glue lines. So there's my rose. If you ever get color where you don't want it, you can take your paper towel and just kind of dab it in there and it will pull a little bit of paint off if you want it to. So that's another technique you can use if you want. So I'm doing this background around the tulip now. You do not have to do what I do. You can choose your own colors and enjoy what you want to try. Have fun. Don't, don't get too concerned about things being perfect. And I'm going to work on this tulip now. I need to decide what color I'm going to make it. So maybe I'll do my tulip a red color and then make this a purple. Let's see, I'm going to get my water going in here. I already pulled a little bit of red on my brush, so you'll see it looking kind of pink. I'm going to just dip my red into that water and let it run. Almost takes on a, a rosy color instead of a true red. That's okay. Putting just a little bit of blue in there, and when it touches the red, it turns to kind of a purple color. You see that? Kind of around the base of each of these petals, just to give it a little bit of what we call dimension, to make it look like it's uh, 3D a little bit. Okay, I like that. I'm going to leave that alone the way it is, and move to these leaves. So I'm going to use that light green that I used over here first, and then I can put the dark green on top. You could add a little bit of yellow into it, or a little bit of blue if you only have one green leaf color to change the color in it. Okay, we'll let that dry and see what it looks like. That completes all of our background colors. I've got another swirl and this iris to do. So I decided I'm going to use some purple on this iris. So I'm going to get those paper areas wet on all of the petals. And I think I'll use yellow in the center of the flower. This is the same purple that I used in the background with the blue. Kind of hoping to start light purple and then add some darker into it to kind of pool around like this has done. I have purple iris are my favorite. I'm trying to think if I want to add another color to this besides just the purple. But sometimes adding just a little bit of another color makes it look a little more 3D. But I kind of like that it, the way it looks all by itself. So I don't think that I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and come over here to my last swirl. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So orange in this swirl. It looks a little bit like a snail, doesn't it? I hope you've enjoyed trying glue line painting using glue lines and a watercolor wash. For more craft ideas, come on over to welcometonanas.com and join the fun.